Question 11 for the 2021 VCAA chemistry exam. And this one is to do with spectroscopy. So we've got the peaks in CNMR and HNMR, and we've got a mass spectrum peak. Um, so therefore, infrared spectrum peak appears at this section here. That probably could be an O to H, um, based on my knowledge of the, uh, what are they called? Based on my knowledge of the absorptions for different functional groups. But number of peaks, we've got two peaks. Which of these ones will produce two peaks? Um, this guy's got two carbons. There's no, there's no symmetry here. That's two peaks. This one here has got symmetry here. We're going to have two peaks there. This guy here, again, symmetry there. Two peaks on the carbon NMR. This guy here, again, we're going to have two peaks on there. So they all have two peaks on the NMR, on the carbon NMR spectrum. Three peaks on HNMR. This guy can be ruled out. It's not going to be that one because this one's only going to have one, two environments. This guy's got one environment here because these guys are mirrored. This guy's going to have another one. So that's good for that. It's still good. This guy here, again, he's going to have an environment on the outside here. Second, third environment here. This guy's only going to have one hydrogen environment, so it's not going to be that. So therefore, we've dealt with that. Um, now we're down to um, these two here. Molar mass of 60. Um, so therefore, let's have a look. C3 is 12 times 3 plus O, which is 16, equals that, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 8, plus 52, I think it was, so that's 60. That's looking good there. What's this guy here? It's going to be different, I think, but let's have a look at it anyway. Um, 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 14 for our hydrogen, sorry, for our nitrogen, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 9 gives me... 59, so therefore it's not going to be that guy, it's going to be B, because my mass spectrum here, my peak of my mass spectrum, tells me my molar mass. Um, the infrared spectroscopy, that can be looked at in my data booklet, just to double check, um, but uh, where is it? Spectroscopy is here, you can see here that OH acids and alcohols um, and amines all produce peaks in that section so therefore you can't really use that to rule out these two here but certainly um, based on molar mass it has to be uh, answer is b let's move on to question 12 butane undergoes complete combustion according to this equation uh, i need to know the mass of carbon dioxide is produced when we that releases that much energy okay so um Let's have a look. Which one is going to be our limiting reagent, I guess? This is because we've got two things here. Because we got the delta H as well of this is in our data booklet. So I can work out, is it actually, is that all undergoing combustion? Or um, what is going on here? So complete combustion. Where is my delta H? Delta H for this reaction. Uh, butane is 288. O, 2880 times that by 2 because we've got two butanes here gives me 5720 uh, kilojoules per mole i think that's right can i do my maths properly 2880 times 2 576 all right anyway let's double check this so let's work out if all of this actually combusted so therefore all right um Five, so three, 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 oh, divided by my um, heat of combustion. Actually, let's go back to that. Let's go divide by it by how much per gram, and I should get how many grams actually produced. Divided by 49.7 equals three, three, oh, three, 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 oh, wasn't it? Yep. Divided by 49.7. Gives me 60, so I know that it definitely did produce, that's right. So therefore I can just work out my number of moles of my meat, my butane equals uh, 67.0 divided by whatever butane is. What is butane? 12 times 4 equals that, plus 10 gives me 58. So therefore 67 divided by 58 equals 1.155. 
five mole times that by four equals my number of moles of carbon dioxide equals uh, 4.62. Um, that's my number of moles of carbon dioxide. My mass of CO2 equals N times MR, which equals 4.62 times, oh, I'm out of the page, times by 44, which is my molar mass of carbon dioxide, times that by 44 gives me 203.3 grams, and therefore it's that one um, is my answer to that question. So what I did there is I made sure that that was the amount of um, methane that was actually burnt. Um, it kind of says it is, but I just wanted to double check that. But then I just found out the number of moles of methane. I ratioed that to my carbon dioxide, and then I multiplied the moles of carbon dioxide by its molar mass. Gives me D there for that answer. Let's move on to... Um, Question number uh, 13. Question 13. We've got the overall discharge reaction for a lead acid battery. Is that during recharge the cathode? So cathode is reduction. So let's make sure we have um, reduction reactions so far. This is an oxidation reaction because we're producing electrons. We don't want that. Reduction is the gain of electrons. So therefore it has to be this one, this one, or not. That one's not right either. So therefore, that's good. If this is discharge, we are going to be going back the other way. So therefore, we must be starting off with um, lead sulfate. So the answer there is B. Um, again, going through making sure reduction is cathode. So therefore, cross out anything that's oxidation. And then say that recharge is going backwards. Find out what my reactant actually is going to be. When the lead acid battery is discharging, the oxidizing agent is what? Okay, so oxidizing agent is being reduced, alrighty. So what is happening here? It has to be either this one or this one because these are the two things that are reacting when we're discharging. So I can cross off that and I can cross off that. Um, now the lead solid here, that will be forming lead ions and that therefore that is gonna be oxidized. That leaves me with this guy here, which is gonna be the thing that's gonna be reduced. So therefore the oxidizing agent is being reduced. Work out what logically is happening. A metal solid forming ions uh, is Pb forming Pb2 positive. Okay, that would be oxidation. So therefore this guy must be the reduction that's happening. So therefore we've got our lead oxide forming our lead um, sulfate ions. And that would be the answer to that. Question 15, which of the following statements is correct? Pentane has a higher flash point than octane. Uh, no, it would have a lower flash point because it's a smaller molecule. Smaller molecule means it would be a gas more often, which means it would have a lower, more easy to burn thing. The flash point of all structural isomers of that are equal. That would not be right either because even slight changes in the structure of compounds changes the intermolecular forces, so therefore will impact on its ability to melt or burn. The higher the flash point for a compound, the higher the risk of fire. That is not true either. It is the lower the flash point, which makes it easier for it to burn. The flash point of all optical isomers of that is equal. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but these three are definitely wrong, so I'm going to say that's right. Optical isomers must be quite similar then, in my opinion. Not in my opinion, in my logical reasoning of that question. Let's move on to question 16. I'm not going to spend time thinking about that. Which of the following statements about IR spectroscopy is correct? IR radiation changes the spin state of electrons. That's not true. IR radiation actually impacts the bond vibration of our, um, e our, our molecule. Bond wave number is influenced only by bond strength. Mm, I think it's bond length as well. So I don't want to say that. I'm going to move on. An IR spectrum can be used to determine the purity of a sample. Uh, technically that's right, um, because if you have impurities, you'll have additional absorption. So that kind of makes sense. In IR spectroscopy, in, or in IR spectrum, high transmittance corresponds to high absorption. That is not making sense at all. I'm going to say C there for logic that you could find purity by knowing if you have peaks that you should not have on your in your sample. Question 17. The electrolysis of water is used to produce oxygen gas. The oxygen gas pipetted into 
was piped, sorry, into a 200 litre fixed volume storage at that. When that is added, the pressure of the container increases. What mass of O2 is added to increase the pressure by that much? So what have we got? We need to know the pressure. We've got pressure here, so PV equals NRT. Let's see this logically. Um, I've got a fixed gas and it's stored at that, so this is therefore I need um, number of moles, don't I? So number of moles equals PV over RT. So therefore my pressure is 250. My volume is definitely going to be 200 litres. My temperature, my R is 3.81, sorry, 8.31. Um, and my temperature is going to be 29, not 29, it's going to be 273 plus 22 is 295. So 295. So therefore, we go into this and go on. We say we're going to say 250 times by 200 equals that. Divide that by 8.31 equals that. Divide that by 295 gives me that, which is 20.340 mole of oxygen gas. Therefore, my mass of O2 gas would be 20.4 times by the molar mass, which is 32. So times that by 32 gives me 652.67, which gives me the answer of C. And that should be the answer to that question. Number 17 for the 2021 VCAR chemistry exam. The rest of these will be uploaded shortly.